We're in for a wild night. <laughs> Welcome, 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 everyone, to episode 144 of Born to be Wild, a wild exclusive Hearthstone podcast, where we have fun hanging out with friends, talking about the wild format of Hearthstone, and spotlighting members of the wild community. I am your host, as unusual, Electric Sheep City. It's great to be back on this beautiful Friday evening here in the snowy Denver area. I'm joined tonight by two of my favorite people, Blue Train. You are one of those people who are both here and one of my favorite people. <laughs> Welcome back. How you doing, bud? I'm doing well, and I'm honored to be amongst your favorite people. Oh, shucks. <laughs> Absolutely. And Schmoopy Daddy, you are also one of our favorite people and are back here as well. How are you doing? Broadcasting live from what feels like the plague quarter of Nax Ramus. <laughs> yeah. how I have lurched from sickness to sickness for the past... I don't know, two weeks and my family for the greater part of the month. I'm always happy to be back on the show, though, and and, and very, very happy to do, uh, contribute. Absolutely. And we're always happy to talk with both of y'all. So for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome aboard. Let me briefly explain how this show works. We record this very podcast live every Friday evening at twitch.tv slash born to be wild HS. And the video version of this podcast is then posted to YouTube shortly thereafter. Audio versions are also distributed to all the podcast apps. So, however you're watching, listening, or absorbing via osmosis, this podcast today, thank you. Yes, you. Um, before getting into the main topic of the show, let's say a quick thank you to Shakunin and other patrons of our show. Your support means the world to us. If you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and comment on this video on YouTube. Another si simple way to support the show is to leave a review on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or your podcast platform of choice. If you're watching live on Twitch, we've got some awesome emotes that you can unlock by subscribing to the channel. This is free if you use Amazon Prime. There are also emotes that you can unlock completely free just for following. Uh, insert link for Born to be Wild merch and, uh, possibly a picture of my wife looking cute and met me just sort of at a weird angle. There we go. Perfect. All right. Here's a link to our shop from our main website. Finally, if you'd like to support the show financially, you can join our Patreon for as little as $1 per month. If you'd like to interact with us personally, please join our Discord, a free, amazing online community with friends all across the world who love talking about Wild Hearthstone. Links to all this stuff and more can be found at our website, which is borntobewildhs.com. Uh, and I, Nate has sort of made it a tradition now that, uh, you know, we just give a little sneak preview of what's going on in the Discord and we check out uh, the funny usernames. Um, he definitely had a couple that popped up for me. Uh, I cannot repeat many of these uh, <laughs> on the <laughs> live and and like maybe post show possibly, but uh, but live and recording. But uh, ear infection. Uh, let's say. Speaking um, of uh, from <laughs> quarantine right, and right, right, right. Very, ear infection. Speaking very personally, uh, that one, that one no hit fun. a little too close to home. Uh, hot <laughs> depresso. Uh, <laughs> I like cookies, and uh, we'll go with we'll talk, we'll go with too caffeinated. How about that? Too caffeinated. So definitely, um, you know, the funny usernames is definitely like my jumping off point for the Discord because when I joined, I was just like, oh, I hope I'm on here. Oh, I hope I'm on here. And <laughs> I certainly was on there. And Nate won't remember this, but Nate said something snarky like, I mean, I guess I'll, I guess I'll, have to, yeah, I guess he's a schmoopy daddy. So uh, <laughs> that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, and I, I highly suggest you guys come join the Discord so that uh, you can come hang out and laugh at funny usernames with us. I bet he was snarky about your name because you beat him with some meme pile. And he was bitter about it. I, I don't remember. <laughs> I, don't, I cannot recall uh, what happened in that event. Or maybe rolled over him with Secret Mage, depending on, uh, oh, on what true. it was. Depending on how spiky well. I was feeling. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. 
or maybe even a spicy secret mage. <laughs> Less likely. I usually back then I used to play it just sort of like I need a win. I need a win. I need a win. Uh, now if I play it, it's like okay, uh, we're gonna put in Cadgar and Conjurer's Calling. <laughs> well, in any case. Speaking of Secret Mage, kind of going into a bit of how our weeks were, I'll, I'll kind of kick it off because I hit Legend and Wild this week with Secret Mage itself, kind of right before the mini set. So uh, I have played mini set, set decks and, and we'll feature those a little bit later. But, uh, you know, the, the Legend was slightly before that. Uh, and in Standard, I also hit Legend there, too. Uh, with unholy death knight, I've I've definitely still been uh, grinding those those wins out. I'm like, no, not nearly as far as Schmoopy Schmoopy Daddy as far as you are. I know you're like what almost 800 wins now. I'm a, I'm an even 750. I hit 750 and took like a break. Uh, I'll probably keep pushing later. Nice, yeah. I, so I'm at like 230, 240, somewhere around there. So I'm. I'm steadily working towards it. Uh, those ghouls will be gold before too long. So that's that's most of where my focus has been outside of, again, the the kind of teased uh, later um, <laughs> segment of the uh, the fancy new decks. So Blue Train, how has your week in Hearthstone been, friend? Uh, it's it was a pretty busy week. Uh, not much time for Hearthstone or games in general. I am still on Hearthstone sabbatical, although it's quickly coming to a close because with the mini set, uh, the the world famous Hearthstone community figurehead and leader Corbett Games gave me a few decks to play that I'm I'm chomping at the bit to try. But it was a busy week with work, and and every year around this time, they kind of put me through the uh, the medical ringer to to make sure that uh, my eyes and my brain are still kind of holding steady. So I had a, a couple of MRIs and, and a full field acuity test done and and on top of that doing my standard 60 to 70 hours of work uh, a week um, it, it was a pretty busy time but in Canada it's a long weekend this weekend uh, we're celebrating family and Louis Riel day depending on the province you're in um, we can talk about who Louis Riel was after the the show is done if uh, if there's any curiosity but Monday's off so uh, my hope is that a uh, little late to getting caught up, uh, but, you know, hopefully going to be inspired by some some decks um, and, and the two that I was given by Corbett and Agro Rogue with some pretty bold cuts um, that Schmoopy might be talking about a little bit later and an Agro Priest um, because, you know, uh, ag Agro Gamer here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So that was the week, busy week. Um, so I'm glad that uh, it's it's over, ready to, to relax and, and kind of focus a little bit on on my leisure time. Excellent. Sounds like a really uh, exciting leisure time coming up this weekend in particular. Uh, Schmoopy Daddy, how about you? How was your week, friend? So since I've been on the show, I was kind of like yo-yoing around. I'd, I'd crack two, top 200 with something, and then I'd kind of like... Float back down to 500, goofing off, and then um, I had, like, one kind of, like, cr crazy sort of, you know, to go along with my fever dreams, uh, like, sort of fever dream of a moment where I, I played a, like, Reddit decks uh, in top 200, and I was just like, okay, I am ready to dumpster, uh, dumpster <laughs> cake me, and I almost cracked top 100 playing, like, these, like, goofy off-the-wall, like, you know, like, hand buff dk and even druid and like just like goofy stuff and i'm like oh maybe i can keep playing these up here uh and that and that promptly got me dumpstered down to down to the 500 so then i i'd like all right well let me try a different deck and and i'd play like quest line pirate warrior uh up to top 200 and then i'd like you know goof around with something else and dumpster back down again um when the mini set hit um I was sick of losing to Pillager Rogues, so I was like, all right, let me sleeve up a uh, Pirate Rogue. Uh, played that into, like, 187. The only deck I felt like I couldn't beat was was Ethan Death Knight, but we, we can talk about that a little bit later, because Blue's kind of got the list I pretty much used um, to display, so we can talk about that in more gory detail. Um, but it became the 15th, and it was, like, new Nas Day, and new cards were out, and I'm just like, what am I doing with my life? 
So I dumpstered down to about 3,000. Uh, I'm playing in silver MMR right now, chasing achievements. Um, I saw a screenshot of you queuing into someone who was bronze five. Uh, yeah, that. Well, I mean, that does happen. That does happen. <laughs> and, then, and then, well, so what's funny is, is, like, you get down there and you're like, oh, well, Schmoopy's playing against, like, Free Carbs Druid or, like, you know, Fiery War Axe Warrior. But at Bronze 5, a funny thing happens where you get a lot of people who are experienced players making new accounts. Mm -hmm. So, like, I queued into a Disco Lock in Bronze 5. Um, you also queue into a lot of experienced standard players who are playing their standard deck in Wild. Mm -hmm. So they're playing a coherent deck with a coherent strategy and, like, they know reasonably well how to use it. And I'm playing like, um, you know, like training session warrior, where I'm trying to get as many training sessions as possible off before I die. Uh, so like, it, you get some like interesting matchups, and you do get like, it's not like I, I'm just like running, st you know, rough shot over these poor new players that are barely getting into the wild. A lot of time because there's that barrier to unlock wild. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of know what you're doing when you, even when you get down there. I think the I um the new the the smurfs uh the people who are creating accounts that uh are experienced wild players um that's pretty i didn't even think of that that in a way it kind of goes full circle right you probably have a rougher time right at the bottom than you do when you're kind of in that like low mid sweet spot right definitely like there's definitely spots where like i, I have queued up on bronze five like last day of the month being like all right i'm happy here uh let me play like my pile of greed like you know death knight and you get into some like boxing matches with people where it's just like this person's playing attrition with me like step for step they know what they're doing um they just don't want to queue standard ladder right now and so to preserve their rank they still want to get wins they're going to play wild with their standard deck so yeah like in a way like there's definitely belts where i'd say i'd say the quote-unquote easiest time would be like silver five up to like bronze five uh um gold five where you have you start seeing players that have kind of like gotten through the chop and change of gold but it's not um they're not as experienced, but they might be playing decks that are still good enough and coherent enough where they're like, they got to there where they wanted to get to for a reason. They're not just playing whatever cards they want. Um, but I don't know. I've been basically seeing mill everything. So like, I'm starting to like, I'm starting to get the itch early to like, all right, let me sleeve up Pirate Warrior and go for it. I do want to get 11x this month. So like, uh, uh, you know, not to believe the point, but I, I will get back up there just for now. Little sabbatical, back to my roots, uh, dumpster diving a little bit, getting some achievements, and uh, we'll go from there. What is the 11x cutoff now that the population of the server has increased so much? It's probably not as high as it was prior to the closure of the Chinese server. It's tough to say because like we had such a low 11x cutoff that first month, and then it feels like it retracted back up. Like Nate mm -hmm. didn't get it at 550, and I would have thought oh. that he would have got it at 550. So I'm wondering if it's somewhere in like the you know maybe maybe he just missed it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was like you know high 400s because we had like 6,000 people in yeah. in Wild Legend. Um, you know, in EU, you know, you needed to be in the low, low three. You need to be north of four hundred if you wanted to be safe. There's obviously weird kind of exceptions, but right. uh, yeah, yeah. So it was like a hundred lower on EU than it was in A. So I mean, and some of it could be too. It's it's tough to tell too because you have individual cases. Like Reno Jackson kept his at eight hundred like a couple months ago, mm -hmm. and and well, when the, you know that big month that we had that first month of the expansion, so. Uh, was that a was that a a function of him having an ex exceedingly high win rate and also like just sort of grandfathering it like was that his grace period for 11x where he kept it i, I don't know mm -hmm. um so like it, it's 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 interesting if i would to guess i would say it's like high 400s right now would be where the cutoff is which is lower than it has been in the past um so like you know it's more attainable than it has been but also, you know, you're also the competition's a little bit steeper because I think you have more active players, particularly at the top, that aren't shy about spamming um, 
Disco and Pillager and like you know meta decks to get there. Yeah, I think also the t- the decks that are prominent kind of make ladder a little sweatier. Also, yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Which is why I like I I lost my mind a little bit up there. I was just like, you know, I don't feel like running this race anymore. Let's go, let's go, let's go make like a Cthulhu Death Knight or something like that, and like Plat Ten or something, and and have some fun for a while, and then. <laughs> Cthulhu DK we'll is go, fun. Turn it on. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Cthulhu Death Knight is really fun. Um, I mean. <laughs> I haven't made a good list yet. I feel like such a sham as a deck builder that I haven't, like, <laughs> taken the time to get my old boy and, like, my the class I'm trying to grind through right now. So uh, We actually played uh, Cthulhu Death Knight on the um, theory crafting stream for a little bit, too. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Very different oh, yeah. metas, yeah. <laughs> the, the OG one, you're going, you're going like the old boy, old school Cthulhu in Death Knight, oh, yeah. Awesome. It was, it was a blast. <laughs> he might fit in like a, he might fit in like a hand buff version. Like I don't know, like maybe like that. I wish that deck had more draw. The yeah. hand buff version is my only, my only problem with it. So I don't know. That's we got a lot of, we got a lot of, we got a lot of news this week. <laughs> news, you say. <laughs> Welcome to the news. The news is so good. <laughs> so, the first order of business for news. Test subject was banned in Wild uh, due to an unintended interaction with the new card Mindseer. Um, so, uh, this, this was kind of announced uh, right alongside the... Um, uh, mini set coming out um you know uh, people found the like what turn two turn three otk with a test subject and mind seer and um of course radiant elemental and it's just you know they preemptively banned test test subject it wasn't in you know a whole lot of decks even less than uh um the radiant elemental um and so it's currently banned but they um plan to change test subject and unban it in wild um what what do y'all think this, kind of about that <laughs> so this was really interesting to me for a couple of reasons um the first is that this is the first time they've banned a wild exclusive card now they did come out later and say that they were going to unban it and nerf it um which is more in line i think with what we would expect mm-hmm. but you know initially it was kind of a bit of a shock um also uh, arguments made that this wasn't the card that necessitated the, the, the changing, but that that's an aside. What I was really surprised at was the reaction from the community. So there were a few people that were grateful that the interaction wasn't let loose upon ladder. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Raffle kind of uh, was amongst the chorus of voices that were grateful that they wouldn't have to experience queuing into what was sure to be a miserable experience day one. A lot of people weren't happy that test subjects were banned, though, um, because they didn't want to see a wild card get banned, or they wanted to do the funny for a day or two, or both. Uh, Pretty divisive issue, kind of generated a lot of noise. And I was a little bit surprised, because for me, you know, after kind of queuing into these day one borked decks, I, I mean, does anyone really want that? Like you, you no. play a game with it, yeah. So I mean, better that uh, my opinion, better that action was taken. Good that it was communicated that hey, we're not going to leave the card banned. We're going to fix it. Um, but uh, fix it how I think is going to be a big question, and when is the other one? So very, a very hot topic. Uh, surprisingly, um, and uh, I didn't. I didn't venture onto Reddit for this one. I can only imagine what was going on there. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, like you, I'm. I'm really glad the test subject was preemptively banned because we've seen these like, oh, that this card's gonna break wild. Here's how, and then they've been like, oh, well, we'll see, and then it's broken wild. It's not been fun people can't play the new cards because there's just this like super early uh, OTK and then they fix it. And then we get to actually experience the release as it was supposed to happen. Um, I, I feel like this trajectory was a lot better because, Oh, Hey, here's this broken interaction. We, we're, we're not playing uh, against Tiller priest 
or, or T- Tiller Warlock, right? Like we're, we're yeah. not switcheroo priest. Yeah. The, we, we missed yeah. out on the like really homogenized, just broken interaction that, that makes it to where we can't experiment with stuff. And we're, we're going straight to the actual release. I understand why some people were, you know, upset that this wild exclusive card, they, they can't play with at the moment. Um, but since they're, they, you know, pushed the like break glass in case of emergency button to, um, you know, keep it from being such a negative experience right out the gate and they'll rework test subject. Like you said, I'm interested to see how, uh, but I'm glad that we kind of fast forwarded to like the actual release itself of the expansion or of the mini set. <laughs> it was the best of the bad options they right. had. And I mean, okay, you people were saying they should have known. They didn't, right? So you can't go back and change what's happened. All you can do is go forward. And and for their options were if their options were to do nothing <laughs> or to for to ban a card. I don't know. I, I think that it was the best of the worst options. Not that, that you know, a lot of grumbling about the, the state of the meta as it is right now. I think assuredly it would have been worse. Um, it, it can always be worse. <laughs> and, and, and this probably would have put that uh, old saying to the test and, and, and would have revealed itself to be true. So, you know, they, they did the thing and, and, I, I think that there was like a spike on release day of, of chatter. I think it, abated pretty quickly so mm-hmm. yeah yeah i remember uh, yeah, seeing whenever like a mini set comes out my reaction or or a new set my reaction is is like always like what fresh hell awaits <laughs> i am almost never excited for new cards until i get them in my hands and i play with them and so like i'm right along with you guys this was um this was an interaction i'm glad died in the womb um i am a little bit miffed that um it, it it took probably like two, three minutes to crack. Like once once Mindseer was kind of like shown to the world, it's like, hey, look, new new uh, new priest car. Check this out, guys. Um, like it it was pretty easy to crack as far as combos go. Like, and we've been waiting honestly for a test subject to get cracked in half at some point. Um, just infinite value being what it's going to be. Um, it's so cheap at one mana. Um, like there have been some goofy, like sort of Mimi combos that 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 you can do with it that have been around that you, we've tolerated because they haven't been good. Um, but this one looked like good and like consistent and fast mm-hmm. and early. And so like for all the same reasons that you guys said, I'm glad it was gone. Uh, to the spikes that wish they had gotten it. Like, sorry, you're taking one for the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think I think that the one no people want it like they they want to play it like once or twice and then put it on ice, you know. I mean, it, it, it doesn't work that way. If if you're going to have an opportunity to play it once or twice, it'll be over the span of 2 weeks, right? Cuz that's usually the the patch cycle, 2 weeks after the release. I don't I don't know. 2 weeks of this thing. Like no. I and, and the <laughs> thing is it's like it's so cheap. Like I and it's so easy to set up. It would have been ubiquitous on ladder. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it, it would have been it, worse it, than the switcheroo priest that that terrorized us for for a time post rotation last year. The funny thing is, like we we cracked switcheroo in a similar amount of time. That's actually a really clever analogy to bring up. It's just how it was just like, oh, like this can't be this possibly this easy. You just run. <laughs> Stones Dusk 4 and the darkness and you play switcheroo and now you've got a 2020 with charge like and then and then you do an extra little combo and now it's either a little bit bigger or you've made a second one it can't possibly be this simple no it was actually that simple and like this looked even simpler as far as just like radiant test subject thing go um i actually was wondering if this was going to eventually be a precursor i know they'll they temporarily banned test subject. I'm not considering test subject banned right now. I know I can't play it in wild, but like this isn't when people talk about a ban on Reddit and they're like, no, ban fireball, ban ice block. <laughs> they want a card deleted. They right. don't want it coming back in another form. This is very clearly going to come back in another form. So I wish they hadn't used the term ban, but like it is banned, but like it's not the revenge ban that people are looking for. Um It'll be back. I thought this was actually going to be the like the sticking point that puts Radiant at like four mana, like the Sork treatment. 
Um, you know, they never they said they're going to change test subjects. Who knows? Maybe they 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 unban test subjects and got radian. Like, radian knows for now, happen. so I doubt they do anything now. Right. And like, oh. obviously, they're not going to do anything to mine seer now. Seer now, but like, they could, right? Like, they could. They could. Um, the problem is, they really want you shooting your own stuff. Like, like with like the undead synergies and like stuff like chicken egg. And like just just things that they've set up and built in, they want you shooting your own stuff, um, but just not this stuff. Uh, so so yeah, I don't know how they're gonna change test subjects so that um, it doesn't it eradicate those uh, those kind of meme combos. But those might the, you know. And for those that suggested, yeah, those that suggested that all you have to do is increase its health. No, no, that just makes it moderately more inconvenient to do the funny. Um, they're going to have to do a little bit more than just tweak the number. They're going to have to probably put new text on the card. Yeah. Or make it a 0-20. <laughs> Although then you, you open yourself up to other problems by doing that, then that would you be every single inner fire. I know, I, I know, I'm know, i kidding. But you don't, you, don't, you don't fix the card. You don't fix the card by upping the stat. You have to either fix one of the adjoining cards or change the text on the test subjects. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, we'll see what happens. My my prediction is that this is going to remain banned until rotation. Whoa, hot take! I, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, see, I don't see why not. Um, I don't think it's that hot. Um, if it like so so we know in, from pa past um, patches and nerfs that cards that require localization take far more time mm -hmm. to produce. Mm -hmm. It generally requires a client update. I could be wrong. Maybe they do find a good number that's a break point for this, and they just have to tweak it. But if that, well, let me rephrase. It'll be a little less hot, more lukewarm. If they do indeed change text, it'll stay banned until rotation. Mm. They Assuming can't even change the number, because like if you increase the health at all, all of a sudden, now like, inner fire starts sniffing around it and being like, "Oh, here's this one mana thing I can buff that when it dies, I get my spells back." Like there's like. I get my inner wrong. fire back. <laughs> I get my right. divine spirit back. I get yeah, my bless totally. back. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's kind of a tricky card. Like it's it's a tricky card to balance, and it's it's always been kind of there, waiting to get cracked in half. And like, I mean, yeah, I, I think that if you just say at the end of your turn, death rattle at the end of your turn, return any spells you cast on this minion to your hand, just keeping it That'll from being, it. yeah, an endless loop, and then whenever problematic things rotate then you can rotate test sub or a uh, buff revert test subject back um we have to code it though that's yeah. the thing and yeah. like you got all those, you code it, all those languages that code in yeah all those languages they have to localize to although perhaps maybe not as many languages as they once had to localize for that is quite possible so changing subject uh, as my <laughs> friends say speaking of churros because speaking of something completely different <laughs> a bunch of cards got updated to dual class minions um so um minty fresh uh leo robles um on twitter uh, one of our our devs um said let's address the mecha elephant in the room why do we change so many minions into mech slash beasts in the latest patch? In 25.0, we added dual type minions and adjusted several minions in standard and wild into the new dual type world. At the same time, we did not make cards like Spider Bomb or Ursatron mech slash beast uh, and kept them as just mechs. After all, they're mechs made in the image of beasts, not quote unquote real beasts. But we did make cards like Light Ray and Arcanosaur elemental and beast. Thing is, Light Ray and Arcanosaur aren't real beasts either. Uh, they're just elementals that take the shape of beasts. Because of this, we reevaluated how we wanted to treat cards like Ursatron to be consistent with our new dual type ruling on cards like Light Ray. With dual type minions being a brand new thing, we want to be as consistent as we can with the rules around it. We do see that some changes are having bigger effects on decks and than others, and we'll keep a watchful eye out for minion dual type synergies in future sets. Um, 
So uh, there were quite a few of them that that received that kind of dual uh, addition um, specifically to mech slash beasts. Um, Shmoopy, I know uh, in the Discord earlier you were mentioning um, some of the kind of interactions that that you see uh, this change kind of bringing about. Um, what are the kind of the biggest impact of these kind of dual additions in existing decks or deck possibilities? Um, I've seen at least one list today that had, um, I think it's K9 Tron. Now that it's a beast in beast hunter as an additional dredge, that's not using a harpoon gun, um, a harpoon gun charge, but grabbing something important, like grabbing a Tavish or grabbing, you know, just, just something that you don't want even necessarily in your dredge pool for when you're going to equip your harpoon gun and you can play it on curve. Um, I think Nekaru, uh, it, like any kind of like, um, any kind of beast deck, whether it's beast hunter is going to sniff Mekaru. Um, I really like it in beast Druid. If that Ooh. ever becomes a deck again, um, because it, you might have like yet another like opportunity for a beast stick, a uh, beast tick, like the same way that you had with um, haunted creeper, haunted creeper. Um, you know, again, pooping out beasts all of a sudden it's just like, Whoa, that's, that's making my, my, uh, my matriarch cheaper. Um, Beyond that, like, I I've seen a somewhat functional Porcupine Hunter, because now it's a mech beast. You can do funny mech things with it, while also doing funny beast things. So, like, I, anytime they open these, these minions up, especially mechs and beasts that have so much synergy as far as discounting their mana, or buffing their stats, um, or, or drawing with Buzzard, I would pay attention to it. And I would keep an eye on it. And even if it doesn't necessarily make a meta deck, um, you're definitely going to have situations where it, it, it makes some cute off meta stuff that's fun to play with. And it's fun to experiment with as a, as a deck builder. And, and so recently, Copper Hunter was just ubiquitous, to use a word you were using just earlier. Um, and the addition of these previously only mechs to now being beasts... K9 Otron makes so much sense in Copper Hunter, as so does um, the Mecharoo that you were talking about. I mean, it's just it Absolutely. opens it up. That's a little tough. That's a little bit tougher because like the one drops are like the 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 competition for one drops, especially when you're dealing with Buzzard, is is so much harder. But that it's a sense. really good beast mech. So I just like the idea of mech beast hunter. Um porcupine hunter was a deck that i tried back in the day to always try to force and make work it never was quite there and and it was on the back of usually really bad card draw being able to assemble the the, the pieces to make it work so if you're able to draw off buzzard there might be other applications for it because really buzzard is one of the few draw engines that can propagate a hunter archetype in wild i know it has other cards but generally speaking they're not good enough um, yeah, so uh, I mean, I don't think anything anything is really viable right now because the wild meta is really tight. Mm -hmm. But if something were to happen, fingers crossed, um, things were to slow down just a tick, then I think that there are opportunities that open up. Also, this foreshadows um, what's to come at rotation. I don't think they would have gone to all this trouble if this wasn't going to be relevant in some way. And and right now, even in standard, it's it's interesting, but it's not specifically relevant. So this kind of feels like there's, you know, more to come with this, and it'll be interesting to see what that is. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, I'm any of those kind of reading the tea leaves towards uh what the next meta will look like is always worth uh paying attention to and this does seem to be a pretty significant pointer, as perhaps does this next update, and that is Skulking Geist updated to destroy all one-cost spells. So previously, whenever Skulking Geist would go off, if thing, the spells were discounted to one, but their original cost was higher or lower, um, it wouldn't. Skulking Geist would not destroy them. However, now. Um, 
if they didn't start out as one cost, but they are now, Skulking Geist destroys them all. So uh, Minty Fresh again uh, goes on to explain that since the creation of Skulking Geist, uh, we've had a lot more effects that adjust cost in hand and or deck. And this card, Skulking Geist, is a standout inconsistency in the interaction with a card's de uh, definitional cost and their current cost. It's an adjustment of an older card to match modern interactions. Confusion caused by Geist is evidenced by what seemed like a once in a lifetime, uh, once a month <laughs> post online like, wait, why did Ge Geist destroy this card? Or wait, why didn't Geist destroy this card? This uh, change helps uphold the what you see is what you get tenet that we now have in Hearthstone. Uh, and the best take that I've seen about this was I Schmoopy, I think it was you in our Discord earlier saying, uh, uh where was this whenever celestial alignment was everywhere? Like that <laughs> would have been so yeah, incredible. I, I have three words to describe what I think of this. Uh-huh. Naga, C, Witch. That's three, right? One, two, three. Yeah. This is this is one of those. There are no mistakes in life. There are only happy accidents. <laughs> They're making lemonade here. This is clearly not something that they intended to do, else they would have done it some time ago. Um, but it happened because we've seen that before. And I, I bring up Nagasi, which because the change that propagated Giants Hunter and Giants Warlock was very similar to this, right? Some kind of coding mechanic changed on the back end that changed the way these things interacted with one another that discounted the giants now geist kind of nukes the, the one cost cards there is no shot that this was done intentionally they found it they saw it they're like eh, why not we'll just leave it which which i suppose is fine um because you know if you're bold enough to play alignment then i mean good on good on you like these are just <laughs> cards that are not alignment are cards that don't really see play geist no longer really sees play although maybe a little bit more than alignment i don't know i i cannot for a minute accept that this was part of some greater master plan again just like with the dual type minions this foreshadows potentially some change they had to make in the game engine to accommodate a new mechanic that's going to be introduced right. and to change geist back to the way it was probably would have been onerous and 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 not a priority i just think it's funny how they're like yeah we intended it to be this way the whole time guys wink wink and it's like okay i believe you of course and they, and they revert the spreading play animation to be back to where the way it was where they all pop up again you no because that? you see spreading plague part of the part of the card's power is the user experience of <laughs> being in a long right. protracted grind out right when and you so feel the plague spreading scarab, yeah <laughs> when you see every scarab pop up on the screen one by one <laughs> you're getting the true druid experience it does kind of feel like that though right like you had like, you had, like a buffed spreading plague for a while where like the the animation happened all at once and we're like <gasps> This is great. And then, like, it was a bug they fixed, and they're like, no, this is how it was supposed to interact. My, my bad. I mean, um, I, I, I don't begrudge them for not wanting to change it, but, like, to kind of try and pass it off as, like, we intended it to be this way the whole time. Eh, I don't know. It kind of reads slightly disingenuous to me. But, I mean, in the end of the day, I don't really think that this is a, a huge deal. Although, who knows? Maybe, again, you know, uh, what, I'm what I'm more interested in is. What did they? What are they introducing to the game that that um, changed the way these cards interact with one another? And and I think again that's going to be a, a rotation thing. Uh, next expansion. So something that was interesting was that the tinfoil hat idea I saw I think from Zeddy was just like Geist is going in core. This is a change to to soup it up to get it all fixed up so it's not bugged. It's going in core. And like I was like. Nah, why? that's too much effort. Why? Like, are we bringing <laughs> it's too much effort. Standard? Is this why we're, we're doing this? Um, I do think this card sees a significant amount of play, especially if you start looking at, like, anytime there's arena list, I, especially if it's from a, a, a Chinese deck builder, they're putting in Skulking Geist. They are scared to death of Mildruid, which is really funny because when I play Mildruid against them, like, I'm always, like, waiting. I'm like... 
am I going to get the guy still? I'm going to get the, there it is, there it is, I burned the guy. Right? And then you have to worry about the steam cleaner. Mm-hmm. And then after the steam cleaner, you're like, okay, now I can't let leave any idols in hand or they're going to get it with their theater. And like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of tongue in cheek joking around, but like, you know, Geist is like one of those, it's one of those cards that was always kind of like, um, it's just sort of a handbrake on the format, right? It's like making mm-hmm. sure that the Jade Druid can never really get above a tier two deck. Because if it was ever too too overpowered or like Jade Idol was ever like, you know, the the main win condition, this is this is literally engineered to nuke it. So um it is strange that it's getting the change now. You could argue that it's it's um a nerf. Because uh, if you are playing this and you're hoping that it's going to do something against Inner Fire Priest, um, this doesn't kill Potion Illusion or Inner Fire anymore. You had better hope that uh, you know you're the, after they've palm readed or they have a couple of Radiant Elementals on board that um, guys get something important, but it's not guaranteed anymore the way that it once was. So um, I know I've seen people like Dane say that this is actually a nerf. I wouldn't call it a nerf because I think getting uh, you're going to get more cards um, in general with Geist now, um, but uh, it's uh, it's at least a side grade, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's a goofy one. Like why now? Yeah. So I, I, my why now unless it's an accident? Right. Which I think it being an accident is the most likely the case. And and my my theory, and it is just a theory, um, is that. You know how most things do operate, uh, like the the tweet mentions, is that it is what things are now. I think that the new mechanic, or a new mechanic, a new interaction in a, a future set, is going to be looking at um, the original cost of cards, and that's probably going to have some sort of a keyword like mana thirst or something like that, and thus. The fact that Geist did the opposite, they they assigned it to not have the new keyword. Again, just a theory, um, and and who knows how accurate that'll be. But whenever something changes, there's there's typically a, especially substantively, like actual developer resources had to go in to make, you know, some sort of a change, um, to Geist in particular. Whether that's a side effect whether that's cleaning it up to assign to one one or the other, whether it's what, um, maybe a happy accident, uh, maybe assigning it to a specific thing. I think we'll probably know maybe not next set, maybe, you know, in, in, in a future expansion or mini set or, 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 uh, cause they are quite a bit ahead on a lot of those things, but, but I think we'll, we'll see that kind of bear fruit over the next year or so. To your point, they did just print Thaddeus, right? Who pays special attention to the original cost of cards. So, like, like mm. to your point, that they tend to, like, kind of, like, I don't know if you guys notice it. They tend to kind of, like, dribble out little, like, cookie crumbs sometimes with, yeah. like, mini sets or, or just, like, you know, these little, these little releases of cards where they can give you a little preview of, like, hey, this is the harbinger of what is to come. Mm-hmm. And they did it with, they kind of did it with like Stealer of Souls and the Demon Seed, right? Like that was very clearly those cards were were meant to to be together. And they did their darndest to make, to, to like make <laughs> those two interact with, you know, each other in Constructed uh, before they finally just decided to just nuke the setup in general. Um, so like, I think you're right, Sheep. I think it's probably... Um, especially since Thaddeus exists, that there could be something like that coming. And and it could even be that Thaddeus was the, the change that changed Geist too. Like it could be specifically sure. for the one that just came out. Um, yeah. Cause that was a really good point there too, Schmoopy that <laughs> Thaddeus is one that changed how that, that interaction works. That was just rolled out. Yeah. Yeah. Not even. Yeah. But it sounds like we all agree that, that, Geist was not explicitly changed. It was right. changed as as a result of it was collateral damage, if you will, or a co- a collateral change. How how about we go with that? That that sounds right. Collateral Probably, change. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, I'd say. yeah. Still still fascinating stuff. It's always 
it's always fun to try and get the subtext of these things, right? I just, I also like looking at the tweet, you know, I'm remarking like that the person that kind of tweeted the, hey, this interaction has changed. And then the developer comments come in. It was a reactive, you know, kind of communication, not a proactive one. That also kind of makes my spidey sense go up. But, you know, again, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm not making a big enough deal about this. Um, but, uh, you know, um, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. Well, yeah. yeah, it's definitely noteworthy to to know how the card interacts different but like you said I, I don't know that it makes a big meta impact so much as just hey different interaction to to know about just in case your opponent does play celestial alignment you can now geist and be really happy <laughs> yeah. would have been nice and hey maybe whenever celestial alignment rotates it will no longer be asymmetrical and we'll be <laughs> i can I, I know I know I'm gonna eat my words here. This is just another card. I can't I can't see them reverting. I, I don't know. Like I, I think it's not even because it would be too powerful or not powerful enough, but like I'm just like thinking like imagine the howling of like a thousand redditors if they unnerf raid the docks, you know? Like I, I just would you want to visit that grief upon yourself, even if it was totally fine? You know, the, the perception is what becomes reality. And when it comes to cards that drive a certain perception, Celestial Alignment and Raid the Docks are like two, two of them. opposite yeah. extremes, you know? Um, I really <laughs> want them to nerf Raid the Docks. I, I, it's so funny. People hate that card so much. And, and, and I'm like, I, I liked it. I like not having to think too much. I like having the game kind of do the thing for me sometimes. But you know, I, I will be—I will not be disappointed or surprised if it—if it stays the way it is, or or only gets partially reverted. Um, but you know, who knows? Um, rotation is always interesting. There's—I thought when it came to rotation, there were precedents. But I think if the last two years have shown us anything, it's that the only precedent is that every year the rule that gets thrown out and something different happens. You know, mm -hmm. you. If you told me last year that they were not going to revert Gibberling, I would have been shocked. And then they mm -hmm. didn't, because the year before that, they reverted everything. So who who knows what what's going to happen? It's 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 so random to use that term. Yeah, and I think some things are, um, you know, they they address things as they're presented, um, and sometimes the precedents. You know, it was good to to have whenever it it was there, but sometimes it should be broken. Um, there there are times that like with Gibberling, I don't know why it wasn't unnerfed. Like I think that would be fine. <laughs> um, I mean, with discard warlock and pillager rogue, like right. would Gibberling be that? Up? I don't, I don't know. Maybe maybe this is our year sheet. Maybe they're gonna they're they're gonna our boy's gonna come back. <laughs> Jibberling's back. <laughs> give Patches charge again, please. I want him uh, to be in charge don't, again. Don't give Patches charge. Don't give oh, Patches charge. I, I have <laughs> a compromise I think would make everyone happy. All right. Leave Patches as is mechanically, but just give him the old voice line back. Yes. I'll take okay. that. Yeah. Compromise okay. accepted. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, we get it. He was in charge because he charged. I don't think people really care that much anymore now that they've made him a gorgeous diamond card yeah look at that segue he looks so good um, diamond patches is so good yeah i mean he needs that og voice line back that that diamond patches is so awesome yeah i mean if you're if you were a diamond card detractor i submit to you diamond patches <laughs> and you rest your case <laughs> that's it uh, the yeah. other two are pretty cool. Um, I really like Zola too. I was going to say, I, I find Zola a sec, uh, as, a, as a, a second favorite. I didn't know I would like her as much as I, I did playing her recently. I was like, oh, wow. There's, I almost get more details from the diamond card than I did from the originals. Um, Reno, I'm like still getting used to because like, I, I haven't played him a ton. But I, I don't know. What, you, what, do you, what do you guys think? 
Yeah. Um, so first, especially for our audio listeners, uh, there are three new diamond versions of iconic cards. So um, we mentioned them uh, in passing, but uh, Patches, the pirate, Zola, the Gorgon, Reno, the Jackson. <laughs> and to acquire each of these diamond cards. Uh, so for Reno, uh, collect all 45 League of Explorer cards and then unlock the um achievement that goes along with that for patches collect all 20 mean streets of gadgets and legendary cards and for zola collect all 23 cobalts and catacombs legendaries um so uh i had gold copies of all of these um when uh so i did not have a golden raza the chain so thank you patches for giving me a golden raza um nice. That's a good That's one. A nice one. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, Reno gave me a golden Elise, which was great. And which one? uh Elise Starseeker. Mm-hmm. Um okay. and Zola gave me a golden rune spear. Um, which I mean, cool. Spicy. We're in keeping. We're in keeping with the reroll process. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so two like just amazing one hey it'll be fun to play around with so uh they originally the only one that had the re-roll um kind of stuff b- baked in was patches but they uh fixed the issues with reno and zola so that we can re-roll those as well um and blue like you said like they they look awesome um patches zola both incredible reno seems to be kind of like either you love it or you hate it i personally really love it but like i mean i liked it, it i mean it's a little goofy but he's yeah a bit of a goof right so it's, yeah. it's pretty yeah. consistent exactly so uh i think they look great i'm also kind of a completionist in general so you know any more ways to get like fancy stuff and then hey re-rolling the golden ones to get more golden things yay shinies <laughs> My gold patch has turned into a Rathion. I did not have your luck. Oh. I never had a golden Reno. I thought about having him, but like I think the core set delayed my use of dust. Mm-hmm. Right? Like we all have a golden Reno right now. Um, and uh, it never made sense for me to make Zola gold because you get zero gold value. Sorry to right. make all the cards. So like that was on like my lowest of tier lists to ever make gold cheap i'm shocked you have a gold zola i don't know why <laughs> well i i don't anymore so <laughs> well, I, well, I had, yeah had had, had. Um, <laughs> i all i have these three in gold I, I don't know i opted not to re-roll i i don't know i just maybe that was silly but i i probably would never use the non-diamond version because unlike some i i enjoy the diamond ones but I don't know. I just I have I've had them for so many years. I gold patches. I remember. I'm pretty sure that I packed a gold patches when Mean Streets came out. And then I dusted nice. it when it got nerfed, and then I recrafted it in gold. So it's kind of been with me for a long time. Gold Reno. I don't remember. Probably when Raza Priest was a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did it, but I, I don't know. I, I just I'm a little attached to these cards. I'm not gonna re-roll them, especially when I hear like horror stories of rune spear and rathion but uh but raza. I, I guess it's yeah but raza but you know i think the bottom line is like why wouldn't you play if you like the diamond cards and why would you not use them they're so especially these are so great mm-hmm. oh well that's a sticking point with the signature right like you can't use both the signature and the diamond and you can't get rid of one or keep the other so it's like well the signature it's easy baby look terrible so you just use anything but whereas these look wonderful so you kind of get torn see i i really like the signature <laughs> ones too but i know i'm definitely the exception to the rule there i do think that the, the signature, signature I think it depends on the signature yeah I, I, that's I'm fair that's fair i i do think that especially for the first one having something more hearthstone probably would have been good than you know something that's looks mm-hmm. like you know dead and rotting and which I is mean, exactly it, what i wanted from wrath of the lich king but it's yeah, it's, it's not, not very it's not flavorful that. for the, i don't mind the i don't mind the chromatic art i just think that when i describe something that's aesthetically pleasing to me chunky is not a descriptor or an adjective that i want to apply they're just so chunky and blocky and they look so like they look almost like someone put 
painted them on with like Microsoft Paint. Anyways, we didn't want to get into this rabbit hole. Too, right? like, I like, love Microsoft Paint. <laughs> you know they're killing it? What? No. Yeah, they're going to get rid of Paint. What is Nintendo going to do his art on now? I don't know. They're getting rid of Paint. They're adding tabs to Notepad. Like, Windows is dead to me. I'm now an Apple user the whole way. I, I'm kidding. But yeah, they're they're making some some changes. They have the Paint 3D, which I've used quite a bit. Like those very tasteful memes that I post on my Twitter. They're all products of Paint 3D because it can do um it can do stuff. Anyways, we have to adapt with the times, and so the signature cards are going to be better going forward because they won't have MS Paint anymore to shop them up in anymore. Because clearly that was what they were made in, because they look Clear. like, yeah. Clear Sorry, up. I had to get the last word. <laughs> and we will have Paint 3D Diamond Portraits soon. <laughs> TM. <laughs> so, um, uh, and then on the negative side of things, we had some price adjustments. Um, so... The, there was the uh, an official forum post that uh, Hearthstone's price increased in several countries, including uh, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, the UK, Georgia, Turkey, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, South Korea, Taiwan, and Japan. So. The price adjustments, the prices didn't go down anywhere. Um, and some places... Don't say. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> some places, like Argentina, they went up substantially. Yeah, so one thing that Hearthstone had, which I was a big proponent of, was they had regionalized pricing, right? So you, you might have heard... Uh, Old Guardian had an excellent video about this, you know, the Big Mac index, right? So, like, when you think about the world, um, it is not a monolithic place. Uh, cost of living differs greatly in countries. So, you know, not every country is, is as wealthy as, as those of us who are in North America and have the privilege, privilege of living in the United States and Canada. Their dollars are worth far less. And they earn less money. So, you know, typically in economics... You want to ensure that consumers can access your park, your product at a price point that's reasonable for them. And it's generally accepted that this will increase your total revenues that you collect. Mm -hmm. um, other games don't do this, and I always find it very frustrating. And, and by the way, for those of us in Canada, we, we haven't had parity pricing ever. So the prices didn't go up in Canada because we've always been paying 40% more, which, which really hurts. You know, I mean, I kind of... I'm inclined to resent having to pay 40% more than, than Schmoopy Daddy does for a pre-order. Um, and so they, you know, this this feels like a big step backwards, but I think there's some interesting context where why it might have happened. Uh, before we kind of delve into that, I do want to say that my guess is that the people that create the game content that we enjoy so much are not in charge of these pricing policies. Yeah. And it's it's a it's a shame and a disservice to those who worked really hard on um, the mini set that this kind of came out at the same time. Um, and it's 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 a shame how it came out um, pretty pretty much without warning um, on the eve of launch. And uh, yeah, I feel for those that put their 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 heart and soul into this, right? Because it's kind of really eclipsed their moment of celebration, the new product release. Yeah. So, anyways something to keep in mind that you know this this isn't this wasn't probably the decision of the content creators or um or rather the developers or those whom you interact with the community managers um they're probably just as unhappy about the, the timing of this as well um that said I, I i think that uh the we can only speculate why this came about all of a sudden why this reversal happened um but i, I think that it might warrant some exploration if you both agree. Definitely. Yeah. I think so. It's, it's an important topic. So uh, Shmoopy, I, I think that probably of, of us all, um, you probably are most tuned into some of the, the, the context. 
Um, but maybe before you kind of dive into the reasons, you might want to just remind everyone kind of some of the, the big changes that might have served as catalyst for this um, change in pricing structure. Sure. So, you know, uh, in the in the not too distant past, we had the um, Chinese server finally go under lock and key. Um, it is it is currently not operational. It's currently put in the deep dive and kind of as feelers. As I kind of started sort of like, you know, all those all those months ago when I came on the show kind of outlining what I thought was going to happen. Um, players started setting down roots and kind of making exit strategies and, and yeah. making new profiles. And when they were making new profiles, uh, a lot of them were using VPNs and a lot of them had their VPN set. Well, if I can pick any region that I want and say that I'm from that region... Um, why wouldn't I pick the regions where I'm paying the least? So you had a bunch of players decide that they are going to claim to be Argentinian and pay Argentinian prices for game content in order to get their profiles basically up uh, up to speed. Um, the way for, I read this... Just for context, the, the I'm just Googling right now uh, Argentina to USD... Um, one American, one Argent, Argentine peso equals 0. 0.0052 US dollars. So not five cents, 0. 0.05 cents. So, so think about the, you know, you think about the, 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 the disparity in pricing, the cost relative to one's income in Argentina, it's going to be very, very inexpensive for someone accessing it from and, you know, right. outside of Argentina. Right. right. But meanwhile, um, this is not a unique problem to Blizzard or Hearthstone as a game. Um, Steam also had was, I think, playing around with regional pricing and ended up having to increase its prices at some point because of, again, people kind of abusing VPNs and stuff like that and claiming they're, hey, you know, we're I, I'm from Argentina, but I'm sitting in North America someplace. Um, and it, it feels like to me that Blizzard kind of fumbled the ball as far as the Chinese market goes and let the Chinese market drop. But the players still wanted to play Blizzard products. So they did the best that they could to kind of land on their feet. And uh, they've lost, like, you know, their accounts, access to their accounts temporarily. Yeah. So they're looking for ways to build back up. So they're doing it the most fisc fisc fiscally, you know, savvy way that they could possibly do it. And this feels almost like cracking back on that now. Blizzard wants to get their plow to flesh. And this is the way that they do it, is basically saying, okay, well, you know, if you're going to go around us and you're going to claim to be from different regions, you know. Um, we are, we'll just increase the prices across the regions and that way we, we recoup our money. Um, I, I, I failed to believe that like, maybe it was a significant enough movement to, to catch Blizzard's attention, but I, I don't know how much money this is really going to make them. If like you say, Blue, where, you know, there's a reason why regional pricing is smart economic mm -hmm. idea. Right, like this, this feels like a very much like a sugar rush kind of temporary injection of funds um they do a business practice like this so i have a slightly different take but i think that the take is of no consequence because those who are impacted by this the chinese community that effectively had their their game shut down and their collections taken away from them and the people who live in in yeah, you know, argentina that had a 900 percent right price no. increase yeah like i mean so I, I think that they didn't do it because they were afraid that they were going to lose money. Because if you think about it, they're not making any money off of the Chinese players anymore because they can't, there's no, let, let, let's, let's kind of take a step back here. When people that, that live in mainland China um, who are accessing the game outside of, you know, the construct, it's not, it's a bit of a legal gray area. Um, maybe in the past, I thought it was, far more illegal than it is but it's not something that's sanctioned or or, or 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 condoned so i think that the reason that blizzard did this 
the Chinese market is huge. And as you spoke about in a previous episode, you need to partner with a Chinese company to access the Chinese market. But if all the Chinese players that are super invested in the game found another way to engage with the game outside of that partner, and, and I would assume that they're trying to find someone new to partner with, although I don't know whom, because NetEase is like the giant. Um, if they don't get that engaged player base, i.e. the whales, the hyper-engaged, the terminally online, why would you why would you partner to bring the game in, right? So they, they kind of need to, to, to clamp them off to use them as leverage to re-enter that market again which kind of makes it even worse after a fashion because like the 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 folks from South America who are most acutely impacted by this right because that's where the price increases were the most in Brazil and Argentina although in eastern Europe i mean you think about it like you know they're still fighting a war in Ukraine and and yeah. you know it's mm-hmm. kind of like a pretty bad optics to do it there um part of the reason why they're dollars in in the crapper is because they're fighting off a, fo- a hostile foreign invasion um you know, if if indeed my hypothesis is correct, they're willing to take these smaller markets and use them as as you know affect their experience so that they can have leverage trying to re-enter that market. I, I think that that the one thing that that I'll say is when you enter into the Chinese market, you know that you're gonna have to partner and that's going to eat at your bottom line. But like you also have brand equity now. And like, just to like walk away without having someone new to partner with, to have that continuity of experience is such a, a, a blow to the, the brand. So, I mean, the best way that I would say it is, what if you lost your ability to access your Hearthstone collection for you know 18 months or, or the risk of never being able to access it again? I think you probably have some negative feelings towards the brand and the company that, that, that stewards that brand. 100%. So yeah. I, it, it just seems like such a, even if there's lots of money on the line, like, are you going to sacrifice your brand to, to try and squeeze a few extra dollars, right? It's like, you know, are you going to start selling like Louis Vuitton handbags, you know, at 7-Eleven because you think you have a new market or are you going to like want to keep that brand cachet, right? And like the, the, Blizzard, the Blizzard brand is taking a hit. China and all these countries, I mean, there's a friend of ours that that is from Argentina. He He's like, he's like, I don't want to stop playing the game, but like, you know, uh, buying a certain quantity of rune stones is like, a third of some people's net take home earning in a year like it's crazy yeah he's done paying he's done doing pre-orders like it's just like pre like pre-orders are no longer in reach for many of these people mm-hmm. or, um, or financial purchases right because yeah you know, yeah it's, just it's, not, it's not it's not it's no longer it's no longer something that's possible and if that's no longer something that's possible now you're talking about like you know a delay in content to those regions and some of those players being at a disadvantage and and you know i don't know how many i don't know how many competitive south americans are in the standard scene right as far as just like you know masters tour players and players that are um there were know, several um yeah. there's at least several right like they're they're not i, I imagine they're not happy about this they're put at a competitive disadvantage because uh, because all of a sudden they, they may not be able to afford the cards that they need to compete. So. Yeah. It, it, it's a real shame because I, I would have hoped that other game companies would have indexed their pricing like they do, like Blizzard did. Like I felt like Blizzard was a leader in that regard of, of regionalized pricing to make their games more accessible. I, I always subscribe to the notion that gatekeeping is bad and accessibility is good. Mm-hmm. And and what this is going to amount to is, you know, we've got gatekeeping, gatekeeping from people who want to access the game who can't because of politics, gatekeeping for people who can't access the game because it went from being affordable to not affordable overnight with a couple of hours notice. So it's, it's I mean, that's it's, the other it's thing rough. too. It's just sort of dropped. Like this, this wasn't something that was kind of like, right. hey, by the way, this is coming down the pipe. This wasn't softballed at all. This was just yeah, because they didn't want people to to stockpile like you know 
Rune, the, it's funny because you wouldn't have been able to do this in the past prior to rune stones but with the advent of rune stones you could just hoard you could like buy like you know uh three or four of the, the biggest rune stone bundles and then you're good for like a year you know before that you, you couldn't do that so they're kind of hoisted by their own petard a little bit here with their introduction of the rune stone system which meant they had to stealth drop this announcement because like you could you could you could hoard all of this in-game currency now. The whole thing is just... And this is a foreign <laughs> post. Like, yeah. I, I wouldn't know yeah. where to fuck, right? Like, this is not a press release. This is not so, a... This is, this so is Tom made a really, really good point. So Tom is our friend who uh, is from Argentina. He what, what, He's like, people are going to buy things by accident and not realize they're paying the new price. Mm -hmm. You know, because people are, you know... You know just, gonna click around and and you know it's muscle memory right <laughs> i it, it it's it's unfortunate yeah i i don't know that i would buy like spent even a quarter of the money that i do now on it if everything was 700 percent higher costed which is what happened in some places it's outrageous. I, I whine all the time for the 30 or 40 percent more that i have to pay um and, uh, you know, like Hydra talks a lot about this. Um, so Hydra is also from Canada. There always has to be a Canadian on the show. As is tradition. Um, as is tradition. Um, you know, Hydra talks a lot about how he's kind of changed his, um, the purchases he makes within the game, a little bit more mindful about them. Yeah. Frankly, so have I. Um, you know, unfortunately, the Canadian dollar, for reasons, is struggling to keep up with the U.S. dollar. It's about 40 cents to the dollar right now. Um, sometimes it's closer to 80. It, it fluctuates depending on a variety of things. Um, prices for us have been going up too. Now, obviously not to the extent in these other places. So I'm not right. trying to equate the two. But, you know, if I'm having to reevaluate purchases because the prices go up by 20%, well, what do you do when it goes up by 300% like it did in Brazil? Or you know a thousand percent in argentina like i remember like when when i when i asked tom because i'm not familiar with the currencies like what does this mean for you he's like just add two zeros to everything that's that's how much the price has gone up by just like think about that like Crazy. it's just something it's that would have cost ten dollars now costs a thousand like it, it, yeah it, it it's it just puts it, it like it like solidly puts it out of reach it's just yeah. like okay i am now a free-to-play player like this is this is a thing that has happened to me. I am now a duels main and a free to free to play player, right? Like that's like I'm an arena main, uh, you know. And and like thankfully, like they've they there are better ways to generate in game value and currency now than there have been in the past. I think, especially with duels, like I, mm -hmm. I think duels can be so lucrative if you know what you're doing. Um, not but, everyone has the desire all, all the or talent. It's, like, but... it's time you're now grinding value. It's not time you're enjoying content. And it's it's content's locked away. It's not the same. So but... I think it's fair to say that this change is a bummer, yeah. uh, both in terms yeah. of substance and timing. And, and um, I don't think that there's going to be anyone around that's really going to um, really be able to cite any positives to this. My only hope, and this is probably me being naive is that if they do figure out the situation in china they reinstitute regional pricing but i don't think they will their competitors don't do it yeah and and to kind of look into this conversation uh, about the the devs who actually work on the content itself um you know they i think wisely uh for for their positions haven't spoken too much on this and i think that's that's responsible for them um but they just picking up on the the tone of, of of tweets and stuff, it seems like uh, they were caught off guard about this as well. Um, and at the very least, you know that I, I don't think any of the people working on the game want less people to be able to access the game. So um, definitely, uh, this change is negatively going to negatively affect the Hearthstone community. Uh, negatively going to affect people who accessibility people who can actually play the game to the extent that they have before. And I, I think it's just all around a negative thing to come out, but please also don't take that out 
on the devs because they... no <laughs> and, and just to just you know a little bit of a tangent but like mm -hmm. you know if it i bet i don't know this is a fact but I, I bet you're right that they didn't even know this was coming and then on top of this after that everyone that works at blizzard kind of got noticed that hey return to office full yeah. time like this was not a good this should have been a week of celebration um not a lot to celebrate and 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 you know <laughs> this return to office things um it could be tough uh for for a lot of a lot of folks um it, it 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 you know my heart goes out to 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 the folks working on the game because nobody ever wants their new product to be clouded by price adjustments return to office um you know it's 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 I, 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 my heart goes out to them, and and I hope that uh, I hope that next week is a better week yeah. for all concerned. Can only go up from here, right? <laughs> Wiser words have never been spoken. That is not the end of the episode, <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully something a little bit more cheery. Yes. <laughs> so speaking of the new content, the 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 new cards are in the game now. Like what well, Return to Naxxramas has officially been out for four days. Um, broadly, before we go into, you know, what we've been playing uh, and, and Nate uh, left uh, a detail from him as well. So uh, I'll, I'll put on my, my Nate Wolf voice to uh, present that part. <laughs> but before we go into particulars, what are your initial thoughts and impressions of the new meta, the new cards and, and kind of how that's rolled out into our wild format. Pitch it over your so, way first, Smoopy. Sure. Um, I think, I think I'm, largely the impact, I think, at the very top is going to be kind of minimal. I think Free Shaman got a very powerful tool. I think um, Pirate Rogue got a very powerful tool. How strong are Free Shaman and Pirate Rogue in the meta itself? You can make some arguments that like both of those decks are possibly uh, maybe high tier two. Uh, maybe Free Shaman does a little better. Maybe it's low. Maybe it's low tier one where it, it makes a big impact. But it's 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 largely same old, same old. Um, the 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 mini set has given us these wonderful horseman decks which I think at lower ranks you have people who are kind of scrambling around. I've had, I've had meme friends who are, who are just like, are these decks OP? Are these decks OP? Are these decks OP? Are they memes? Um, they're, they are, they're memes in a, in a, in a world where we have pillager rogues and disco locks. Um, it, I don't think they're unfair memes. Uh, and they're recently nerfed, <laughs> which I think we could kind of talk about with the hot fix a little bit. Um, but uh, you know they can end the game on turn seven. Like that is a thing that can happen. And uh, but but largely from what I've experienced, um, kind of same old, same old. Like Pirate Rogue was kind of an okay deck. Uh, it, it's still okay. It got better. Great. Um, it, it it still loses to things that it lost to before, and it still beats the things that it beat before. Um, Free Shaman, I imagine, is largely the case, though. I I tell you what. Um, I saw cold storage and I immediately went into doomer mode because now I'm just like, I, I think once people get used to the card you're talking about now against the best players playing around what cards you are allowed to play against shaman because they can be used against you at the drop of a hat and thrown into the shutter pool. And I like that scares the ever living daylights out of me and just the flexibility of the card. Like, you know, let me print more armor vendors. Let me print more dirty rats. Let me print more Astalors. Um, it, 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 it freaks me out. Um, so I, I, I think, I think they got a powerful tool, but that, again, that deck still has bad matchups and one of them being Pirate Rogue, which got a little better. So like, I think it's more same old, same old. Yeah. The, there used to be a card that we, we had to pay six mana to get that same effect and it didn't actually do the freezing <laughs> itself. Hmm. <laughs> they left Marabi dead in a ditch. <laughs> but the My boy. boy's day will come. <laughs> the boy. 
Hey, you are not, you know, you're not thinking with your brain here, Sheep. You got to be playing Marabi and Cold Storage so that you get two copies of whatever you're freezing. That's that's the five head play. That's what we need to do. Value. <laughs> so <laughs> right whenever like Free Shaman rolled out, I actually did play it with Murabi and got multiple um, uh, juggernauts on board because of her. Because, you know, like that was when Questline Pirate Warrior was everywhere. That was pretty kicking rad. Uh, so, I mean, if Questline Pirate Warrior comes back, that'd be even better. Huh? Huh? Hey, don't hold your breath. I'm not. Team raid the docks here. Um, you know, I, I think this the mini set didn't really have an impact when the cards came out. Definitely the ones that caught my eye were a mistake. Mm -hmm. And the rogue um, pirate, jo Jolly Roger, is that the name? Yeah. Uh, those are the two cards. Uh, mistake is kind of really what got my brain going because... Um, uh, an archetype that I adore, that that sheep um, also adores, Agro Druid, ran some pretty suboptimal pirates to um, include patches, and mistake is just a strict upgrade. Mm -hmm. Also, like if you if you there's the potential to kind of use it in a pirate and beast context, although I think with the current builds of um, Agro Druid, it's not super relevant. But that that kind of ability to dual type could be relevant depending on cards that come out in the future um so that that was where my brain leapt to immediately i think that we'll hear more about those results in a moment um pirate row gets a little bit better especially into shaman um because we're able to now have pirates that have three statted bodies instead of one which does much better into chisel and makes for more favorable trades but I, the bottom line is that the format's still defined by decks that just blow you out by turn three or four, discard Warlock, Pillager, Rogue, Quest Mage, um, non-interactive decks. So, I mean, the extent that these things got better, I mean, yeah, Free Shaman is spooky and Pirate Rogue might be spooky, but these decks are being held back by a general format that that's saying, like, <laughs> you want to kill me by turn five? Nope, that's too slow. So if there is a dialing back then these things may come to the fore. But right now they're being suppressed by a fairly oppressive meta at the top. Although kind of hearing Shmoopy Daddy talk about some of the variety that we're seeing elsewhere, maybe that's that's true only in a certain segment. Um, but yeah, the pirates basically is is what I gravitated towards. Mistake's definitely like, I mean, Mistake has some people thinking like, oh, maybe I can make like a menagerie warrior. So that like we can finally build around tent trashers and get like you know our our five five rush dragons down on dur turn two or three. Oh, uh, like maybe we can build <laughs> a non even totem shaman with patches and like you know and we pull pat like like mistake plus patches is like a really interesting kind of axis to build around. Where like I. I know for the Born to Be Wild listener series final, I was stuck putting amalgams in my Beast Hunter with patches in there as like my like third tribe as like a pirate that I was pulling with the amalgams. Um, I would have I would just play Mistake now, right? Like that's a strict upgrade, and not only that, but like it's actually a decent package, right? Like we, it wasn't too long ago we were playing Odd Paladin with a couple of deck hands to pull patches. Yeah, patches is that strong of of a card, right? So like, I I, I agree with you. Mistake is is it, it, even if it's not in any meta decks now, it's going to be a deck build it, because it's so cheap, and it's a dire mole, and it can pull patches. Like it, it's going to be around forever. People are going to build around it. Yeah. So how did Agro Druid do? Uh, so Agro Dru Agro Druid actually did pretty well. Um, so I took it on to the ladder. Um, I basically reformatted um, my sunken city list. Um, so there's quite a bit of uh, dredge in particular in it. Um, I actually did not end up cutting like Bloodsail Corsair because I was running into a decent amount of Fish Rogue. Um, so it, it still was like decent. And then since I'm, you know, running the Ajran gardens, like 
basically additional like half of <laughs> an embiggen. Uh, I, I was still running um, the uh, Tuscar trawler um, and parachute brigand. So uh, it's it just a blast. Um, I think I went, so I played 10 games with it and I either went eight and two or seven and three. Um, so did pretty well. So let me ask. So some things that kind of stood out for me with from the list, and mm-hmm. and I I think that it's very thoughtfully built, but just kind of things that jumped out at me. Um, so voracious reader is back as a draw engine. Um, although you still have the one composting, I'm imagining that uh, because you're running two readers, that's your main your main reload. Yeah. So I guess between all of like, you know, there's always this like, well, composting is now the new standard over reader. It, it seems like just the the the, the immediate uh, instant gratification of reader is uh, um, necessary to, to drive this, huh? Yeah. So what I was running into is that um, whenever I was needing draw, um, oftentimes uh, composting would either be two or four and thus reader was you know comparable or i was needing to you know i i obviously had already emptied out my hand hence playing reader um and my my board was starting to you know fizzle out you know the (laughs) what happens with aggro druid in general um and so reader especially with all of the different uh ways to buff your deck and ambigan and gardens uh, kind of transitioned me into the late game. Um, again, late game for aggro druid being like four or five. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that that's kind of my play experience. I was playing against a lot of um, the uh, pirate rogue. So, you know, like I mentioned, for the blood sail corsair itself. Um, so, it being kind of a a board based, you know, who can control the board the best. Um, may have kind of skewed me in the way of reader over composting because my board was getting dealt with as well. Um, so it could just have been more of a medical at that point. Um, but I, I think both are good. Uh, in my particular pocket meta, Voracious Reader just ended up being more advantageous to run two ofs. Yeah, no, I, I always found composting to be good, but oftentimes, especially with this deck, you want those cards in hand immediately. Yeah. And you didn't feel that Arbor Up kind of like bumped up into Reader at all, just because you're playing it as soon as you draw it, basically? Is that kind of the... the? Yeah, Um. so if I could only get two cards from Reader because I have an Arbor Up in my hand, I'm. I mean cool because <laughs> i've got an arbor up in hand right um and like you said as soon as i i draw arbor up i play arbor up essentially um that's the that's the finisher um and it it works as a finisher so much and when it doesn't finish it keeps the board which is even better so um i've practiced or practiced played around with uh cutting arbor up and every time i do i end up bringing it back yeah, it's a board in a box, basically. It's, yeah. it's very strong. And then finally, Trawler over Scrappy with Scraps. Um, I, I kind of, you know, I guess maybe because it's standard or because it draws you what feels like two cards, oftentimes um, that's being run. Um, uh, the two one that draws a choose one card and then splits mm-hmm. it. Um, I I think that the the two, three body on Trawler is probably more relevant especially if it grows with them big and buffs and i really like ashram gardens so I, i'm really happy to see it get gardens i think is the big thing right like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. you get gardens and and like uh, a marker and a big in and you're off and that crab rider um probably gets real spooky real fast oh yeah i actually scammed a, a big priest because of crab rider um was able to deal with like both of their uh five fives the blood of gahoon um <laughs> keep them from getting crazy as well as going face myself with all my other stuff and then i had another crab rider for reload and yeah yeah cr- crab rider can carry easily i feel like the blood sail corsair is so savvy as like 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 how many people would just auto just swap that to a deck hand but like but when it, you're this corsair with- is it, sorry 
the one two body is so much better than the two one two, right? Yeah, like, no, but yeah. like even the effect, like if I'm playing against an even shaman, like I want to take some chunks off a of chisel. Oh yeah, I wanna, I wanna take a charge off of a swordfish. Like I, I just think. I, I, Sheep, I don't know where you're playing this, but I imagine you're seeing a lot of like the aggro and and mm-hmm. surprisingly, it's kind of a, like a weapon heavy aggro. I feel like right now, where it, it it doesn't always feel like it, but if whether it's pirate rogue or whether it's even shaman, like there's always kind of weapons around. You're getting value on the blood sail corsairs. I just feel like that's a really savvy meta call. Thank you. Yeah, and, and if I was playing a um, anything with the if I was playing any weapons, then I would probably be running the <laughs> um, right if you had deck hand, for, but if you had needle for druid right right like yeah it, like it, would, it would make sense because like now now it's shatter priest like the deck hands are so much better because you're running oh, yeah. needle they have charge so yeah. like so like it, it's it, my dream has come true <laughs> the way. um but but uh, yeah, no, like I, I know so many people would want like the aggressively statted like deckhand, but like that stuff gets picked off in this meta. Like I, I just, I, I love the the blood sail Cor- corsair because like it's one of those pirates mm-hmm. that you're always looking to cut when you're doing kind of like a pirate package. But it, in here, it, it, it makes so much sen- more sense as a one drop. Yeah, big fan. And if we end up getting a weapon. <sighs> Honestly, I might cut like Claw Fury Adept before I'd cut um, Corsair for the deck hand and or weapon inclusion. Um, Claw Fury for Adept that, is also great. <laughs> for that lone composting. That's kind yeah. of the 30th card. Yeah, it really is. I'll put this in my deck rotation when I finally feel like climbing again. I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll go to this, the loon. I... Uh... You know, one of the nice things about falling a 10x is, uh, you know, I can now actually play this. Yeah. I, yeah. So there you go. Ah, uh, you posted the code in chat. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna build this in game right now, so I don't. Yeah. So it's there <laughs> when I when I when I finally do the thing. Yeah, buddy. Uh, so the other deck that I've been playing recently is um, Martian Boo's Potato Shaman. Um, <laughs> so th- this is definitely a tier fun deck. Um, I think I played like five or so games with it and went like two and three. So, you know, like decent enough. Um, it's Evolve Shaman and Reno. No um, Shutterwalk, you know, so we've got like the Mogu Flesh Shaper and Gold Shire Knoll to get out like early. We've got different Evolve mechanics uh, of our own, like Evolve and Unstable Evolution, a really heavy uh, Bog Spine Knuckles um, package with uh, Horde Pillager to bring it back. Um, the, where did it go? The two mana, two, two um, elemental to uh, Cage Match Custodian. There we go to um tutor the bog spine knuckles out um and then of course all the things to actually evolve from it um it's definitely a spicy deck it's definitely a fun deck um if i was trying to climb i probably wouldn't play it martian was climbing with it because he's martian and he can do that (laughs) uh but it's another one of those really fun ones that you know hey standard is lamenting evolve shaman we can do it better, but Martian also called it potato shaman because you there know. are no there are no words looking at this deck list. <laughs> yes, I would not I would not consider evolve shaman to be one of those decks that you ever want to make a Reno deck just because like the <laughs> individual evolve cards are so important that you'd almost always want to run two of them. This bog spine knuckles. I'm wondering if its back hurts because it's carrying the team. So hard, uh, so hard, so hard. Like so much so that like that you go with the horde pillager to bring it back. Not that you wouldn't necessarily do like maybe horde pillager as a one of in a normal, uh, you know, in a in a normal. Oh yeah, Aramorn's bringing up in chat, and like we're not supposed to read chat online, but he's bringing up. There's a thrall death seeker in here. It's like there's like this is <laughs> this is scraping the bottom of the barrel as far as evolve mechanics go. There is a uh, Bogstraw Clacker in here, and like yeah, I'm able to does without having to read it. 
But, like, I think Blue Train's going to be, like, flipping through his index, like, trying to figure out, like, what the hell that thing does. <laughs> <laughs> this is a monstrosity of a deck. And, like, uh, but, like, credit to Martian, because, like, this is this is a Martian deck. I, 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 I'm sure it functions. Um, your mileage may vary, but, oh, my. Oh, my. This, like I this, said, this, tier this fun. This is a movie deck. I will, I will play this. <laughs> you will have a blast doing so definitely a tier fun deck that i've been enjoying <laughs> so it's horrifying it's truly horrifying thank you <laughs> uh we also have from um uh nate a whole thing uh, sorry i was scrolling up to his area uh so nate has been sorry <clears throat> i'm channeling my my nate voice i've been losing at competitive hearthstone but winning at having fun that sounds nothing like nate <laughs> so nate says you have him, you have him exact <laughs> that nailed, nailed it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so nate has been losing at competitive hearthstone but winning having fun so he's been playing belomo priest uh so the gallery horseman um do, 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 uh and by what he means by that is Re rivendare warrior otk priest uh that we discussed on the show last week uh he's been playing the list that zeddy posted um which we have up on the screen here and the um Deck code, of course, is in our show notes and in chat. Um, so he hasn't been winning all that much with it, but uh, it's really fun. And when it works, it works really, really well. He actually ran into uh, Nick Deck Tech Weiss, uh, one of our uh, developers, uh, community manager person, friend of the show. I don't know why I need to explain his credentials, but... <laughs> Uh, he was playing Rivendare OTK Hunter, you know, the one with uh, Flark's Boomzooka. And um, so Nate lost to Deck Tech. However, he did get the code for that deck. And, and he posted a picture of it. And Nate, I, I, know, I know he's not here to defend himself, but he does not have Golden Boomzooka. So... He doesn't have a, a golden Glo cloning gallery either. I just noticed that in the other list. That's the only other card that's not gold Nate. in the other list. So, like, <laughs> Nate, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. So, Nick says that uh, the Flarks, Boomzooka, uh, Rivendare, War Rider list it's, isn't great, but it's cool when it works. Um, Reno Jackson has also been playing um, a Rivendare OTK Hunter list. So uh, he's got the tweet up where he did the thing and the list here, which again, Nate, no, no golden boomzooka. And of course, Nate ends his explanation saying, play these at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> so more tier fun decks like we were talking earlier when we were um expanding upon the mini set at the the top of the ladder where there's the the most competitive doesn't see a whole lot of shake up however we do have these new things to play around with and have fun with um when we're not trying to to push rank and this is one of those that tier fun uh can have a lot of fun with so these are greed killer decks. Like yeah. if you're playing again, like if you're playing at an MMR where like somebody's like, I'm gonna set up my dead man's hand warlock where I'm gonna have like the Elix and the plot twist and I'm gonna right like these these decks absolutely farm at that at that MMR and you're gonna have fun playing these decks at that MMR. Um that but that's where these kind of go. And that's where I, I've had like, you know, people kind of reach out to me and, and sort of from the meme community be like, are these decks OP? No, they're they're not OP. They're not OP if you're seriously trying to kill the other opponent. Right. Like if you're there and you're like you want to play your cards and you want to have fun. Um, it just this kind of timer is going to put a it's going to put a clock on the game. 
right? Like, like at some point, I'm going to do the thing and I'm going to win. Um, are they good decks? No, probably not. And they did get nerfed. I actually got all four of my um, my horseman wins because I was achievement hunting in the in the dumpster. A couple of them I got with uh, play dead. And one of the things that the last horseman wasn't doing was it wasn't checking that it died uh, when you activated its death rattle. So play dead no longer works. So I, I noticed oh, yeah. Reno does not have play dead in his list here. Um, so if he happens to draw a horseman before he can cast his flark, um, it might get a little bit awkward. But he does have like you know, he does have like urchin spines plus a spell, right? Like he's got a way to get rid yeah. of it. Um, but I was using play dead and that was working, and I was just like, oh okay, this seems slightly inconsistent, but I don't really, I'm not going to think too deeply about it because uh, it's working. But that was actually a hot fix bug that I think was that today cheap. That you were posting that yeah that was just earlier today and i yeah. of course forgot to move it into our news area there but yeah just today like there wasn't there wasn't a lot of big hot fixes the only other thing was um it i think that was big in there was um they took colossals out of the discover pool for play blazing um is it transmutation transformation mm, blazing that's... transmutation yeah blazing transmutation there you go um so that you couldn't get Turn to napped on, on in standard anymore. Unlucky. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, the only other uh, aspect there that were other things that we've discussed, like being able to re-roll um, like Diamond Reno Jackson and Zola the Gorgon. So now we're all caught back up there. <laughs> oh, um, so blue... I've got um, a couple of decks that you alluded to earlier on line here um, that Corb sent your way. Um, do you want to kind of go over them in any more depth as well? Uh, sure. So, you know, always looking for the, the, the new aggro decks. We talked a little bit about um, Pirate Rogue. And I think that there's some interesting philosophical deviations on on what to include and what not to include. Funny enough, the one you have on screen here, which includes um, uh, two Buccaneers, um, doesn't include the new card Mistake. So after further discussion, um, the 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 idea was to remove Buccaneer from Pirate Rogue as well as Cutting Class and replace that with mistake and and you know remove cutting class like really but that that was the direction that corb wanted to take it in i haven't played it yet schmoopy daddy did um and felt like maybe you know did miss the cutting class a little bit so is that correct i think the idea of taking out buccaneer was very similar to the conversation we had with the uh, mistake in mm -hmm. aggro druid and cutting the deck hand the one three body is just so much better than its two one body that the buck has. If you don't have cutting class and you don't have to boost your swordfish anymore to five to play it for free, it becomes less compelling. So it's lower to the ground. Um, it, it tries to go a little bit wider with the South Sea Captain inclusion. Um, I, I think it's good, uh, but just again with the decks that are kind of dictating the pace of wild. You know your your mileage may vary, but if that if that gets throttled back, some just swordfish rogue with pirates. It just got two really good new pirates with Jolly Roger and Mistake. Um, this deck's mm -hmm. gonna come right back. It's kind of still there. It's just being held back slightly. The second deck is interesting. It's an aggro priest deck. Um, the uh, very similar to the lists that were run um, earlier. Uh, the year past with um, Mind Blast and Shadow Bomber and Dark Bishop Benedictus and all that. Um, what's interesting is that, again, Corbett with the bold cuts, this is why I go to him for these things, because I, I, I can't ever bear to cut cards. Um, in this deck, he cut Shadow Visions and opted to include the new Mind Seer spell. Uh, which, of course, is why test subjects got banned. Mm -hmm. And Mistake, uh, replacing the... Um, Thrive in the Shadows. Trogs. Oh. Yeah, there are no Trogs. Uh, 
recap the exact text on mine, Seer, because like I kind of know what it does, but just a reminder, just for those at home who are listening. It's, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Well, go for it. I don't have it up in front of me, so no, I don't have it up in front of me either. I think uh, I right. think it's so. Uh, Mind Seer so... reads. Uh, it's a one mana priest shadow spell. Of course, it's a shadow priest that reads: deal two damage to a minion. If it dies, deal three damage to the enemy hero. Okay. It's mini, mini, mini mind blast. So the, the, the cut shadow visions, cut trogs, running two mind seers, two mind blasts, and still the rays dead. So just try to push more damage. Of course, the, the damage will become four damage if you have a void touch to 10 in doubt, or five if you have two. Mm -hmm. um, and now we have a much better pirate than, um, you know, the, 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 the one, two um, that uh, ticks off the weapon. Although, funny enough, in this for list, we're, we're, we really do want to run South Sea Deckhand, right. um, the 2 1 charger, if you have a weapon, because we are also running Shadow Cloth Needle, which is essential if you're facing off against opposing rogues, but especially shamans. It's the only thing that will give you a fighting chance to try and uh, to, to stall them from taking the board so you can push in enough damage. Also, uh, the two Cathedral of Atonements is interesting, which gives you some extra draw and some buffs. Um, no Crab Riders in this list, though. I guess it didn't make the cut. Um, you know, I suppose there's just not enough buff effects to, to make it work. But right. boy, would I want to see Crab Rider in here. I always I, wondered I, if Crab Rider and Void Touch Attendant are just like two buddies just waiting to hang out one weekend, crack a couple cold ones. Like I, I've been, I've been waiting for Crab Rider to get into a list like this. Well, what would you cut for Crab Rider? That's the problem. Like, you probably you'd want to cut the Shadow Cloth Needle, which makes I mean, the deckhand the worse. Mistake, uh, that's the mistake slot, right? Like, the mistake slot was it? Like, I would have, like, before the expansion, I might have, you know, I ignore the Mind Seer for Shadow Visions or whatever. I might have Crooked Cooks or, like, a Cult Neophyte in that slot, right? And now, mm -hmm. that's, now that's very solidly mistake. Yeah. Because the 1 3 is going to hang around forever and, and Void Touch the 10. It's going to just help you pile on the damage maybe raise uh, dead so it's such a um, tight list not yeah. quite there yeah. yet but, so, but that, i like your thinking yeah the the thing about raise dead is that you need the shadow spell to make the defias leper trigger and mm. raise dead generally gives you additional um cannon shots or mm. brings back cannon I, or can bring back yeah, shadow well, bomber yeah like, so Raised Dead is so it's important that as a as an as a even shaman playing into Shadow Priest, if they play out like void touched cannon, I'm devolving it immediately to poison their raised dead pool. Because mm -hmm. it means I'm not dealing with void touched attendants forever. I'm not dealing with cannons forever. Like so I I, I think raised dead is still probably too important. Especially because like you're cycling shadow bombers. Like now you have like cute stuff you can do like shadow bomber mind seer your own shadow bomber you've just dealt six to the opposing po you know to the opponent and then he raised at it and now for three like for three mana you've essentially dealt nine like you, you're you've done a three mana pyroblast like there's some cute stuff you can do with it yeah sure. and with shadow visions being removed we we have even less things to proc or, or needle yeah. with although games yeah. are so fast now that probably the double proc with shadow visions is not such a common thing anymore but still um i it, it's tough i'll be honest of the two decks on the screen right now pirate rogue shadow priest i think that shadow priest is kind of like for the aggro savant that wants to play aggro but still be a little bit off meta, you'll still scam wins just because of the sheer burst potential. But in terms of consistency into the decks that you're seeing, I, I think that it's probably going to perform worse than the rogue. Or I, I'm just saying this based on 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 my perception, not with real games under my belt yet. But I suspect that it would also do worse than the aggro druid that you put up um, on screen, just because I feel like that one's a little bit more leaning into um uh the decks that you might see on on the climb um what i'm interested in seeing with the road with the rogue is the south sea captains is kind of a deviation from past inclusions with jolly roger it's kind of this like hey we're playing minions with with bigger bodies we're playing minions that generate other minions and we're gonna go wide so do the cat are the captains good enough to warrant an inclusion 
or do we or do we pull them out for buccaneers and then find something else to cut to put cutting class back in that that's the real the real question i have and and unfortunately that degree of refinement is just not happening right now because people who are playing you know that typically promote the refinement of these archetypes are, are not playing it because of the just the way the meta is right now so my hope is that with rotation coming um you know some of the oppressive decks that are really holding a lot of things back will will kind of um allow these different classic archetypes to um you know be a little bit more viable than they are in different segments of the ladder well, south sea definitely felt like when it when it worked it worked great when you got mm -hmm. double south sea down that works great um i did play this around mini set time again like i kind of said like from like i'd say like 550 up to inside of the top 200 um the, the exact list on the graphic because so no I, mistake but buck yeah no mistake but buck which was a mistake uh, <laughs> um and i i think that the the south seas when they worked they felt good but otherwise they felt a little bit awkward What's so weird, I have, like, this love-hate relationship with Puffer Fist because there's one in the list, but, like, there are times situationally where I'm just like, I, I hope I, I draw my Puffer Fist right. or I'm looking for my Puffer Fist. Mm -hmm. um, but do I feel like it belongs in there? I'm like, ah, it's so tough on paper, but then in practice, it feels much better. Um, I, I almost I, I, wonder... I off air i'm not a big fell thing fell wing guy but like i'm the lunatic that was still playing eviscerates over fell wings in 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 his pirate rogue list and the starfish for a while so i'm probably cost not zero schmoopy daddy zero i'm probably not trustworthy um <laughs> it's but, zero <laughs> yeah, but like, but okay, yeah, but zero it's unless broken. you have to trade. Unless you have to trade, blue. Like you well, can't always go. Face there's your property. problem. You're trading. What you're well, this, all, right, guys, all right, all right. I'm looking at the camera right now. If you're an aggro gamer and you're not going to include a card because maybe you have to trade, that's how you know. Like you're the convincing <laughs> trader right man, now. Greetings, fellow humans. You say that there's zero mana three threes. They're <laughs> not. Zero mana, three threes. They can't get. They don't have charge off of secret passage. I it's can't true. rip a secret passage and deal four to the opponent's face with a fell wing. I just can't do it. And it's not a pirate. So if it's that, not that... a pirate and it's not going to get buff, get me a buff off a of swordfish. That might be a cutting class. So with, with with our South Sea captain and you know basically wanting to to go wide, I almost wonder. Um, and this is thinking about leaning into basically kind of a different, slightly different archetype, still aggro. Um, if we're running more tokens like shark fin fan or um, a blood sail fly booter to just like go wide with a ton of, of like token pirates that then we're buffing up with Salcy captain and going face or getting additional procs with the, the cannon Um it's a slightly different deck, but but I think that those might be worth uh, inclusion if we're we're playing around with a a deck list to to kind of iterate. The two mana one one that gets plus one plus one for every pirate. The rush, the howler that yeah. like everybody's always sniffing around. I might even I would even possibly try those over South Sea captains to see how I like those. I don't know if yeah. you necessarily go wide enough to make them worth. But it's maybe like, if you were running the, the the fans, like Sheep said, like maybe the deck goes yeah. in a complete direction. Like I think that that yeah. because the archetype's not being experimented with, because like even at its most optimal, it's probably suboptimal. We're probably including a lot of choices from last meta that made a lot of sense there, and and Falwing did. I mean, regardless how you feel about it, and I was being a bit obnoxious, um, not not to discount um your your thoughts. <laughs> um but 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 in the last meta um the two highest win rate cards in the deck was uh the dread corsair and the Felwing. now if we start going in this tract where we're going wide instead of i don't even know what you'd call it not tall but but you know more of that burst um you know maybe it maybe it does get cut it, it's hard to say i a captain 
I I was stubborn. I ran South Sea Captain over uh, Cutlass Courier for a very long time mm. until basically the data was so overwhelming that it was superior that I finally relented and took it out. And and I I think that upon reflection, I was worse for the wear by stubbornly clinging to the captains. I like the captains because it was good into the druid decks that were popular at the time because it would allow you to kind of blow them out. And I you know you know how I feel about those stinky control players, right? So yeah. I um I but I, I kind of now ha- have a bad taste in my mouth with the captain the way that you kind of describe it from your experience it does sound a little bit win more but maybe there's maybe with jolly roger there is a better bigger opportunity to go wide maybe maybe it's stocks increase i'll say this that card felt great by the way i, yeah. I like like jolly roger jolly felt roger like called nuts yes yeah. like I, especially if you already had a, a weapon up and like because like my my play style the way my pattern of play i feel like usually comes up i'm not greeting my cannon so I'm playing it. I'm playing my one drop to pull patches on one. Mm-hmm. I'm playing my shiny finder on two. I'm getting my swordfish up on three. And then maybe I'm a dinosaur because I I see this pattern of play not all that often anymore. People are trying to do like giant cannon turns or go wide super wide early. Um, but then on four, cannon Jolly Roger, another one drop. Swing with your weapon. You're talking about three cannon procs. Um, wow. And and guess what becomes free when you get three cannon procs? <laughs> sure, a frenzied I'm, fell I'm wing. Sure, what, like a fell wing? Is it, are you gonna say a fell wing? I didn't that say anything. Jamming up your hand that hasn't been allowed you to listen. I like I, 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 <laughs> people are people are not gonna sell me on the fell wings. I just I just I don't like them personally. I never liked how they felt, but I am also willing to be wrong on that point. How is um, Puffer Fist now that like all these? aggro decks are kind of getting like aggro decks typically ran a lot of one health minions with mistake like you know like looking at how sheep built aggro druid now all of a sudden like it's a little bit beefier on on the health stat lines right is puffer fist even that good anymore it, like I, like i said situationally there are times it felt like okay i really want it right now and yeah. it wasn't just into like the mirror it might be into I might be making little dinky little trades um, into a um, mm, okay. into a, into an even shaman because like yeah. I've got like a bunch of minions with one he- with like one attack right now so like now my Jolly Rogers printing one ones and I have a yeah. lot of one a- a- attack stuff um, you know um, swordfish into a thing from below is yep. you're still off by one health there are a couple you, great yeah. points where it, it felt important. Yeah, and okay. um, I, I think mostly though, if you're really concerned about that matchup with the even shaman, you really should be running two and should try to stick both. Mm-hmm. Um, Probably value puffer fist a lot more in that matchup than frenzied felling. Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, maybe maybe felling's the one. Of, maybe maybe you do cut it. Maybe you're right. I don't I don't know. In the past, I know like against the freeze shamans with which this deck used to excel against. Um, you know. Just getting a bunch of felt, getting a bunch of zero cost like chonkers really was backbreaking. Yeah, down but, early. I mm-hmm. I hundred percent agree. It's just this um. But it's not good into well. Is it good into aggro mirrors? I, it could be. It's hard to say. I I, I don't know. If it's board based yeah, aggro like awkward. we're seeing right now, then it's helpful. But they don't have rush, so it keeps it from being like an you know immediate like super big swing. Um, it's situationally great. And, and situationally good in my experience. Hmm. It's entirely possible. I just, I never played them right, right? Like it's entirely possible that like maybe I should just be dropping them. And then if they die immediately, it, maybe it doesn't matter because like you force the opponent to waste resources into handling them. I, I just, I was never impressed with them. I, I like I tried them very early on when Martian was, was playing with um, Pirate Rogue. Um, and had him in the list. I didn't like him. I didn't like the feel. And maybe that's just my own bias that sort of stuck with me. I've, I've. So fun fact. Um, like if you're wondering it. why I'm so like fixated on including Fantasy Felwings, the first time I ever hit Legend was with Even Hunter, mm-hmm. um, way back in the day, and that was before they nerfed Frenzy Felwing, and that was a big part of the the deck, of course, with the hero power, you know. Oh yeah, no. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a stone cold staple. It's, it's, it's a, oh yeah, 
it's a oh. it's a it's a sentimental favorite of mine um but uh you know i think that the fact that it's not a pirate we have so many quality pirates now with the inclusion of mistake and jolly roger yeah. um you know pirates good swordfish good I mean, that's what I'm always looking at now with a list, like to kind of like, and I love playing, I know you said like Labore was playing like an aggro rogue. And like the thing about Labore when he builds his aggro rogues is he wants half of it to be burned, but he also wants swordfish to work. And it's a yeah. very delicate balance getting it right um, mm -hmm. to the point where you are not whiffing so often that the deck's completely non-functional or feels non-functional. And I, he was cracking to a point at one point where he was just like, I, I'm not bringing this to THL anymore. I've right. done more with it in the past, but like I, I'm it, playing that deck has almost made me appreciate like pir pirate more, like more pirate. How can I, how can I have more pirate? So the um, thing with the aggro decks in wild is over time, as they've gotten refined, I find that more of these kind of situational burst cards have exited the deck. Like, when I look at the Secret Mage builds today, they're minion decks. They, are, we do, they yeah. don't even run Cloud Prince for the most part anymore. Like, I can't, can't even fathom that. And, and so, so, I mean, it's the same thing with, with Pirate Rogue, right? The, you know, we, we joke like, well, I don't have to run Fireball anymore because I've got Fireball on a stick. Well, it turns out Fireball on a stick now is not good enough. So the minions now kind of double as the spells with very powerful battle cries or aura effects. Um, you know, you look at all these these aggro decks we were looking at today, and the one common thread is that they have incredibly efficient minions that fu function in multiple roles and mm. and and have these stat lines that used to be considered ultra premium, right? And and so they're they're you know it, it makes sense that that you don't want to run a card like Eviscerate anymore because. Well, all right, Eviscerate can kill a minion or it could deal four, but, like, what else is it doing? You know, uh, it, it's just not right. good enough. It's not hanging around the trade, no. I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't fit it in a list like this. I think it goes in, like, if you're, again, if you're going to make kind of like a Bernie, more Bernie list, um, you can do that. But I, it, the best you can do is you can hope that it has a different matchup spread than Pirate Rogue. I don't think you can hope that it exceeds Pirate Rogue it'll probably be a step behind it yeah. so like you you would play it you would play it to have a slightly different matchup spread like i found like that burn rogue that uh, at least versions that laboria sent me um did better into even shaman because all of a sudden taunt totem is is less of a factor i can bypass it um for lethal um you know uh, it obviously a, a deck like um Pirate Rogue's already really good into even lock, but like this was like, you know, 90 10 into even lock. Um, but worse into other things because again, it's now it's burn based. I'm using burn spells and I'm not dealing consistent board damage. So, like, you know, he's something like Druid all of a sudden becomes like, you know, a, which is kind of a deck. It's weird. Druids, I, I, I can't, it, with Pirate Rogue's. I, Druids are always kind of funny because as druids have kind of transitioned away from Oaken summons, I find that they are much, much more like nice prey for us board based aggro boys, where we're just kind of like, yes, cut the Oaken summons. Um, good. Is, <laughs> good. Good. Um, like even something like Shadow Priest. I remember Shadow Priest, like when I'd be playing like Reno, <laughs> Reno Druid. And one of my worst matchups is Shadow Priest. And I'm like, what happened? I remember playing Shadow Priest and being like, I, I do I auto concede to Druids? It's such a hopeless matchup. Um, because they gain so much less armor. But I think that's almost coming back around. You're almost seeing Druids going back to gaining armor. In fact, the best druid deck might right now might be questline druid. Um, oh, that is so, that's how you know the meta's completely un like un 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 <laughs> be chopped. Like the minute that like quest druid is like a thing, like you know you've you've crossed you've Max crossed the line. You've Max crossed the line. What has his science his done? <laughs> he had a ton of success with his version. Like if that's like an off meta, uh, honestly, like if you're looking for off meta darlings, um, and you don't really you know, care if you play some Bonk Druid. Um, Maxi had a ton of success with it because you out-armor the Disco. 
and you can also go face. Mm. Um, I don't know how he beats even Shaman because I feel like even Shaman prints so much taunt, but like he's maxi, he finds a way. Like I guess you like you just sort Heart of eventually like, bludgeon them to death, where eventually you reach a point where like I think you, know, you get Maxi's there. Elo, most of the even shamans are bots, although they all got that's banned. Fair. It's not not a deck that's probably. I'm sure you see it once in a while, but I, I don't think you're seeing it. I too think it's much. a tougher matchup, but like Pirate Rogue's free. Like, especially once you get yeah. the Dread Course Heroes out of the way. I imagine like, Secret Mage is probably, because of the armor gain, probably not as like bad a... as you might think. And you're constantly denying Reef Fair mm-hmm. Game, and they run no taunt. Yeah. yeah. And they're not playing Ice Block. They are Unless playing Objection, block. which is a little inconvenient, mm-hmm. I imagine, but. You play for, around it. <laughs> right, for, um, well, so the way you get around objection is, uh, I know at least in Maxi's list, he was running mm-hmm. the um, the new undead, the 4-6, that costs zero when you have enough armor. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. So if you have enough armor, you just bank, have one of those in your back pocket, and you don't play that until you're ready to play guff. And so you'd play that and then get that objected. Then you play guff. Then your secret mage opponent cries. Um, I mean, they, it, Guff probably gets explosive ruined, right? So right. it's probably not, you're not healing for the full eight, but you're still just like smacking them in the face relentlessly. Um, but yeah, it, it's really good into the aggro. I, I imagine applies decent pressure to Pillager. Like the, the armor game itself means that like Pillagers probably have to take a slower line and you're right. constantly smacking them. And you can smack them for a lot at once, so evasion is probably not a big factor. I don't know. It, it, it's interesting that like it, it, that's it's a it's a playable deck right now. It's probably the most playable druid deck. Um, Mill druids probably also okay. Cthune druids also okay, but you'd argue maybe Questline might might be the best as a hot take. Which is like like you said, Blue. If if Questline druid is doing well, like you're. Your meta is in some weird spots. <laughs> uh, uh, Questline Druid was good when Kale and Switcheroo were good. Uh, Questline Druid was good when like the Demon Seed was like good. Like it's 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 bizarre when Questline Druid's good. Yeah, it's like the opposite of Big Priest. When Big Priest is doing well, you're like, all right, this meta's probably all right. This probably this meta's probably healthy. Well, at least that was old Big Priest, right? That was before they was like Nep on three Big Priest. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say these decks that 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 we we talk about today look so much different than they did even two years ago. Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. I, I I think that there's so much potential for the format if it had just even a little bit of TLC given to it. Um, hopefully, at rotation, we'll see it. I don't have much expectations before then. Frankly, I don't have much expectations then either. But if anything were to happen, it would be around then. So fingers crossed. Uh, until then, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take advantage of my low elo uh, from taking a couple months off and jam Dude, some some, fun. some kick back, some, relax, some druid, some aggro druid, some, you earned some, it, enjoy yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, I earned it by not playing. How, you, how's that's that? Really- you get get rewarded by not playing. <laughs> I don't know if you remember how bad, like, I, my lowest point in Wild, or at least how, like, how, like, my, my lowest and how I felt about Wild might have been, like, um, going into Alterac, kind of leaving Stormwind when there was that stranglehold of yeah. Questline mm-hmm. Hunter, Questline Warrior, and even Lock, just sort of as a tier one. Yep. Strangling out any other kind of strategy in tier two to the point where there was no tier two there was like maybe shadow priest was tier two Mm -hmm. and then there was just a tier three and like for me that felt so awful because like if you ever queued if you're doing any kind of anything cute and you were queuing into one of those big three like you knew immediately like rock paper scissors whether or not you'd you'd won or lost and and they were all just sort of covering each other's weak points this kind of feels like that now but you know what changed that that gridlock up at the top? It wasn't necessarily even nerfs to the questline hunter, which did eventually come. Mm-hmm. It was new content. Yeah. And so like a new expansion can come, or like, you know, I know we just got a mini set and we're already wishfully thinking towards the next expansion or rotation, <laughs> or hey, there's gonna be reverts soon. 
you know, like, 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 like wild Hearthstone Christmas is like right around the corner where we get reverts for two weeks and they we pull- see like all these like new powerful cards and it kind of shakes up the format. Um, yeah, they, they've pulled it back from worse. So it, I, it, it doesn't it doesn't take much to shake things up. So if you are in kind of a rut right now, I would say like, hey, listen, you know, stick it out. Um, try to find your fun someplace like I am. I'm like, forget the top. I'm I'm going to go have some fun in the mud in the bottom and, and enjoy some some organic. Uh, apparently, everybody's playing mill decks. Who hurt you, by the way? Low elo. Like who? Like <laughs> who in silver? Like, why am I queuing against like caverns below Pete. mill rogue and uh, mill priest? Like like five mill priests today. Uh, like who hurt you? Um, where is the trauma blanket? Um, but like, you know, aside from that, you know, just find your fun and and try to enjoy it and ride it out. It'll be okay on the other side. I like fun. And I like okay on other sides. (laughs) I, I hope you're right. Um, I think that, uh, you know, some, to your point, took nerfing rapid fire that, that helped in banning demon seed. Um, it won't take much. It won't take much to open things up. That's all they need to do. Excitement abounds. Well, Schmoopy, is there anything else that you want to talk about uh, deck-wise or um, any of that good stuff? No, I figured we doubled up with Blue as far as like the the you know me talking about what I liked about the Pirate Rogue. Again, I, 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 I kind of liked the buck to add a little bit of damage to Swordfish. Like I still look at it as like a as like a one mana add three damage. Um, I might try to fit in Cutting Class there again, possibly in one of the non pirate slots. Like like Felwing would be a would be a pick for me. Um, maybe lower the curve a little bit. I'm not sold on the South Sea captains. Um, they look great on paper. In practice, they're a little bit clunky. Um, but I want to replace them with pirates. I'm not replacing them with non-pirates. Um, mm-hmm. But deck is good. Like deck worked. Like I, I won a bunch of games. The only the only deck I could not beat uh, was even Death Knight. To the point where I even consider like if I'm going to play that deck and I queue an even Death Knight, I might just auto concede and look for a different matchup. Wow. It, it's not it's not worth my time. It, it felt like. Um, you probably hang out just to see if they have the the, they the drew new down. battle master like on curve. Yeah. Cause that thing that thing's a nightmare. Uh printing a void walker every turn. I don't know what they were thinking. Oh, they were thinking for standard. Right. They think it's fine for standard. For wild it's it's cracked. It's it's just it's it's um complete poison for pirate rogue. Um that, that deck is genetically engineered to slaughter pirate rogues. So like that yeah, was is. the one deck that felt bad. Um, Disco, go face, go wide, go face, high roll them, get your weapon up. Um, they can't cataclysm your weapon, and and, and just go face. Um, pillager, go wide. Mm-hmm. Weapon is less important than going wide and just getting bodies on board, uh, so that they have to spend um, mana doing defensive stuff and not mana drawing cards which is a benefit to having learned how to play some Pillager Rogue, is I actually understand what the Pillager Rogue is thinking on the other side instead of just mysteriously them just, like, drawing cards. It's like, no, 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 like, like go as wide as possible um, and make it as threatening as possible. But, yeah, no, Pirate Rogue works. Pirate Rogue still works. Uh, that would be my contribution as far as the deck section goes. I'm, I don't want to share any of my achievement hunting decks because... Um, they are not fit for human consumption. Uh, they're very good at what they do. They're not good at winning. So <laughs> that's not the goal of those ones. So it that's makes not sense. <laughs> You're not trying to win. <laughs> awesome. Well, that I think will wrap up this week's show. Uh, Blue Train, where can people find you around the internet? Uh, two places. Uh, one is Twitter. Uh, twitter.com forward slash blue train b l u t r a n e uh or if twitter is not your thing uh the born to be wild discord uh is a great place to interact with me i'm frequenting many of the channels there um but you can also dm me there as well awesome and schmoopy daddy where around the internet can you be found uh definitely in the born to be wild discord 
Um, definitely active there, trolling for lists, seeing what people post. Um, but also, uh, if you want to see what I'm playing, uh, I'm on Twitter at SchmoopyDaddyHS. Uh, that's a that's a I E instead of a Y for the Schmoopy Daddy part. Um, I don't think I have anything recent. Um, you know, I, I usually post stuff that's like recent that like I'm having fun with. And recently, I've been achievement hunting, so I haven't been regaling any tales from the dumpster yet. But that's the best places to find me. Fantastic. Well, for more wild content or to see where you can find uh, the rest of the cast individually visit us online at born to be wild hs.com so wiser words have never were never spoken and you heard that on born to be wild